According to the Maasai, the only animal with a soul like man is the elephant. When they come across an elephant skull out of respect for its soul, they place grass in the hollows of the skull. This is the beautiful and remarkable story about the elephants of Selenke. Where the wild scrublands run into a faint presence of Mount Kilimanjaro lies a Selenke. Here, four Maasai tribesmen share a common love, that for nature. Elders Olebabu and Thomas Olechurie share experiences gathered over time. Hoping one day these young warriors will pass on the same to the youth within their community. Upande uko ya upande ya Laikipia. Kuna mwali wanaitaga sujue ndigi rekerio. Nasikiaga. Ndigi rekerio na, nafukia upande, upande uko ya juu sana. So nasikia wakati wa koloni walikuwa na wana, wame, wame, kit, kitambo sana. Wakati wa koloni walikuwa na tokolonize. Ndiwa alisukuma wa masai upande hii. Kwa sababu huko. Ni mwali kwa na chemitemi mingi ya maji. Ni mwali mzuri ya kulima at the same time, grazing rights for this pasture had already been issued to elephants. But the Maasai would also have to graze their cattle. A recipe for disaster. Human-wildlife conflict. Nasikia hiyo ndovu iko ndovu korofi ataki ngombe kunye maji. Anasema hii kitu utamaliza leo. Kapukuso kwa mositoni alafu saa ile ikirudia akakasirika akirudi na kutana na mimi akanunga mkuki. Ai najaribu kuhepa akati ile nataka kufika mimi. Mimi akakaa chini. Akaenda kupika mbele. Akakwa mimi na kwa kwa tumbo yake. Akakajua mimi niko hapa. Akajaribu kukanyaga hapa. Kapika, akatoka, akasimia. Akasimia naenda kulala hapa. Bas. Ndofu akarudi, anakuja kuchoma. Anachoma mkono. Baadhi Mungu akawaacha hapa. Akapata mkono. Mimi nimeenda kulala hivi. Akadunga, watu wanapiga, warani wanapiga. Yeye anajaribu kwanda Onatoa mimi simedunga. Akajua, akaenda, mine kawana medunga, akachika meno ingine. Iyo meno ingine. Akakua naingia katikati ya meno. Najaribu kutoa mimi hapa kwa mkuna yake. Sialikuwa mkuki hiko hapa. Esi tolewa. Mkuki akakataa kutoka. Najaribu kutoa mkuki na shundwa. Anapika hapa. Najaribu kutoa mimi hiki mkuki na tadunga chini. Eh naruka. Wanani anafika. Basi yeye anajaribu kimbia. Anapeleka na pelekana, anabeba mimi. Naenda kama kanisa. Wanani akafuata akafuata. Anambi mimi asungumzia mwanani akamwambia, "Hapana pika ndofu juu kichwa. Wachana pika kichwa." Na kama kingitoka mimi bado jakufa kuna nguvu. Wanani basi ka hiyo mwarani kisikia mimi ni bado iko hai ai akawacha akawacha kudunga akashika akashika kanyanganywa akatolewa kiwa na simama akatolewa akarudi nyuma hivi 
eje yari anjaribu kusanguka na kutafutia sisi akapika mpaka akaangusha kaangusha kaamka tena sasa mimi niko nimetoka lakini damu napika kabisa damu napika kama ile mtu kama ile na kwa ifi akafunga hapa warani ya funga hapa akafunga hapa ai hiyo mkono mekatika kabisa the masai with the wildlife they are friends and they are enemy in other words <laughs> because uh, they are friends when there is no fighting when there is no conflict the masai and the elephants they have much big relationship historically the masai cannot stay without uh, with our life because the wildlife help them in many ways uh, i mean especially elephants they help on uh, uh, starting small water holes you know when they found the stagnant water they dig using the legs and then the water will when the water run off stop there the life stop take that water this place was elephant all over by 100% but uh, due to the introduction of uh, selling of tusks and uh, horns for the, the the rhinos people kill them a lot for commercial uses but the masai never knew they didn't kill them it was just some outsiders do the hunting and hunt them and kill them ni kama wasungu kutoka sudi Nairobi eh ndio walikuwa na wanakuja kuinda ndofu na wakiulizwa ni kwa nini wanasema wako na licenses ya serikali na ni kweli wako na licenses kwa sababu walikuwa naenda kama hawaibi wanaua ndofu wanatoa meno anabeba grazing rights lost the elephants vanished from LSNK not to be seen anymore For the Maasai, it was business as usual. Milk the cows in the morning for the family breakfast. As the men prepared to take their herds out to graze. The few remaining elephants would find solace in the rich swamps of Amboseli National Park joining other elephant herds that were already living there. There would be no conflict or poaching in here. A haven though with a controversial history. Patoko kubali wala okay haikuwa hiari yetu ku tupeane lakini unajua serikali wakati hiyo kwa sababu i think ilikuwa ni serikali ya Kenyatta ndio wali walidanganya wale wazee wa, wa, wa wakati hiyo na unajua wakati hiyo hakuna kuna mambo na masomo so watu hawaelewi it is just a meeting where the masses were told if you like this uh, the national park to be established then they say no the no was used to be yes you know when they all raised their hands so the minister who, who was translating now told them okay they said yes which was not right because they say we don't want a national park but they turned back say the masai want a national park and then the government started that national park by then yeah. these elephants would eventually come to be the longest researched elephants in the world Well, my name is Cynthia Moss and I've been studying elephants in Amboseli since 1972. And um I started studying these elephants because they offered a very good chance to study a very natural population of elephants. The first thing I did was to try to photograph every elephant to to, to get their its ID so I could know each elephant individually over time. Cynthia would train a team of Maasai ladies with whom she would identify all elephants in the ecosystem. My name is Katito Sayalel. 
I'm a Maasai local from this community and I've been working with the elephant for the last 26 years. I know all of them individually by names. And in Ambosali National Park, we have 1,900 elephants. And we have 62 family units. And each family, they arrange it in alphabetical order. A project that started in 1972. They do realize the pressure Amboseli National Park is under. A solution to this challenge was fast needed. You couldn't, can't possibly keep 1,800 elephants in, in this national park. It's a tiny national park. It, it, would, it can't hold that many elephants. My name is Kadu Kiwesebuya. I'm the CEO of the African Wildlife Foundation. Uh, originally from Uganda, but I'm East African. I'm a resident here in Nairobi, Kenya for the last five years. I've been working for the African Wildlife Foundation for more than 20 years uh, in different capacities. And the park is only three, about 390 square kilometers. So you can see that we cannot have that population survive only if we are focused on park, improving park management. Jake Greaves Cook, the founder of Game Watchers Safaris, first came up with the concept of a wildlife conservancy on the community land. This would serve as extension of rangeland for elephants beyond the Amboseli National Park. However, the elephants were long gone from here. Would this work? To Lijua Jake through Mtu and I to a lover Smith. Na kupitia kijana rafiki yake sana alikuwa anaitwa Emmanuel Waneto. Eh, sio alikutana na Jake eh uko ngambo I think Uingereza na Jake alikuwa na hii idea ya kutengeneza conservation area eh tukaanza kuongea na group and committee committee nao akakubali kutengeneza eh Selenge Conservation Area So Jack tumemjua wakati huo alikuja kuomba mali ya kuweka wanyama Work started on realizing a dream but would it just remain that a dream Surveys were done, plans were laid out, meetings held, but not a single elephant in sight. Agambiwa hakuna ardhi yenu itaenda, itabaki vile hakuna mali itaharibiwa. Eh mamiti yenu itakaa salama, ngombe yenu itakaa salama. Lakini tutapata eh kuajiri watu. Tuta tutapata ku ku kulipa pesa, kuna pesa mtakuwa mnalipwa. Tuta toa kachoro boma kama hii watu wale watakuwa wanaishi watalia watakuja wanakuja kuangalia hiyo boma wanaacha pesa kidogo so watu kwa ujumla wakakuja wakakubaliana wote ndio tukaandika agreement tukakubaliana a team of rangers was commissioned a viewing deck for sundowners built road networks around the conservancy created with the community in full participation, water holes created, boreholes sunk, generators commissioned. Things were falling in place. Eventually, the water holes filled up. In 1997, the first lease was signed with the LSNK community, setting aside 13,000 acres for the Selenke Conservancy. A bold and new concept for a safari company to lease land and cover the conservancy costs. 
the focus being to provide tangible benefits to the community that the land is being leased from. But there was not a single site of elephants. We believe that most of the wildlife are outside the national parks and uh, to accommodate the ecosystem rather only on parks is to expand beyond parks. And that's why we encourage communities to form conservancies and we believe that is a buffer zone for national parks, but also to expand more land for wildlife. Uh, again, uh, iconic uh, animals like elephants need more space. So only confining them in national parks will not work. That's why community conservancies are very important for iconic animals like elephants. Conservancies are a very, very important part of uh, uh, wildlife management uh, in Africa. They are really it's background to the creation of national parks in Africa is very, very important. Uh, parks were created uh, uh, way back before countries were independent and in most of Africa. And they were really focused on the rich areas where wildlife was, where uh, that is protecting the, 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 the bigger numbers of the wildlife, uh, water sources for wildlife, and they left out the roots and dispersal areas for wildlife. Well, I think the, the concept of conservancy is such a good one, and it's the way to go from now on. I mean, we still, we still must have our national parks that are sacrosanct, but, but uh, for the areas outside of the, of the protected areas, then we, we, sh we, we must have things like conservancies and run by local people and where local people um, contribute and also benefit from that conservancy. In the Amboseli National Park, elephants would go about doing what they do best, eat. And what would not get digested would find its way out of the system. Something that does not go unnoticed. especially by the dung beetle. In her eyes, this is heaven on earth. A land where food and shelter is in plenty. A major beneficiary to this regular bowel movement of the elephant. It is kept busy selecting the choicest cuts to lay its eggs in. The hatchlings will have food available when they become part of the ecosystem. But they weren't the only ones on the elephant dung trail. I remember very well when uh, we started with Jacob Graves Cook, that was back 1997. We used to bring the, cow, the dung of an elephant from Amboseli following the, route, the way up to the conservancy. And that's how the elephants start coming in. Many heard tales. Tales that over 20 years ago, elephant herds walked this land in plenty. Not knowing, one day, they too would get to walk with them on this very land. You know, some people say the males don't have very much of a role to play, but they do. <laughs> they, they are the explorers and the pioneers, and they go off and, and into many different directions. And, and so they, they went up there first, and they started seeing, seeing males come in for, for the water. And, and then eventually, I, eventually the, uh, the females you know, they follow the trails, they scent, they can smell, you know, where the other elephants go. But it, so it was the males who led them there. Yeah, what will Lianza go on now? Go on and say, Oh, could I do Pali? Where? Pick up one big Peter Musipiti at all. I tried to come fun of him, say, Nikenda, Nikita, and you couldn't do Pali. As I landed in Kaleza, what to? Was the Pitia, what was the Pita, one was the Pita, after our mom was the Pita, was Abukuna. So, what can you answer? I liquor and you keep to in 2007, the first herd to move in was that of the V family, led by its matriarch, Vicky. 
She holds the record of having walked the greatest distance from the park boundary, 38 kilometers, and the greatest distance walked in a day, 40.9 kilometers. The V herd are wanderers, bold and daring with a wide range, a big, dominant and self-assured herd with over 60 members. Mohanjit Brar, a fourth-generation Kenyan, received his doctorate degree in the U.S. and is the managing director of Game Watchers and Porini Camps. Having worked closely alongside Jake for almost 20 years, he now leads the team. Focused on protecting habitat in partnership with communities and running a strong business in order to cover all these costs, while delivering a high-quality tourism experience for their guests. Unfortunately, the elephants had not been seen in over 20 years. Um, the community had, uh, had uh, chased them off and gotten rid of them or killed them. Uh, but Jake realized that this area had very big importance and at the same time could be a very important revenue source to improve livelihoods of the communities. So he set up the conservancy with the community, uh, put in a small eco-camp, and uh, it was amazing how the elephants started to come back. And from a period of not having, a, having had elephants in over 20 years, we now, in fact, today we have almost 400 elephants within the conservancy. And the selling is very big and it's, there's no any farming. So it is really helping when the elephant, the other family can come and live here. You know, when you have elephants come into an area, it also... Uh, becomes a protected habitat which increases biodiversity overall. We know animals like elephants are keystone species. They can impact an ecosystem in very uh, 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 serious ways in terms of uh, potentially bringing down trees, opening grasslands, which are very important to herbivores and other plant species. Um, as we know, the digestive system of an elephant is actually uh, very poor, which means a lot of the waste and vegetation that they eat, which is tons, actually goes back into the ecosystem. Today, along with the elephants, a rich variety of wildlife call Selenke Conservancy home. Its guardians are ever ready to host you and show you around this rediscovered jewel. My name is Daniel Mamai. I come from a Selenke, um, which is Selenke Group Branch, and, and I live in an area called Lirero. Before I became a safari guide, um, I went first to school, and then I studied about tour guiding for about a year and a half, and then I got the knowledge on how to express the same uh, knowledge to people, and then I became a guide um, with the Prony Camps back in the year 2002. We live with livestock and I was a herder. I was a young boy. I was going out with my uh, as elders. Um, we would go out, we look up at the cows and we learn a lot about wildlife as well as herding cows. And then after, even just after I completed my secondary schools, I got a chance to teach in a, a local schools as a teacher and for a while and then I taught for about uh, a year and then later on I joined the college and studied the uh, tour guiding. I wanted exactly to, um, to, be, um, to be able to express that knowledge that I have to other people and I was very um, eager to do that so that really made me become a guide. I've been a guide for the last uh, 13 years. Um, we saw these elephants returning back in Selenke um, early, early as in 2005, as far as I can remember. There were two male elephants coming in here and then went back to Amboseli. They brought some other uh, friends of theirs. Um, a, a year later, we saw um, another four. And then in 2007, 2008, we started seeing female elephants now coming into the Selenke Conservancy in big numbers in the year 2000. 2000 and 2017, we must have seen about 300 elephants in this area. And right now, as we speak, 
we have about the same number of elephants in Selenke Conservancy just roaming all around. Mamai's colleague, Muli, had more than his fair share of elephant encounters. When I was 10 years old, that is 1996, 27 uh, July, that was on Saturday, I was looking after cows as my daily basis. Uh, and then uh, we met with uh, seven boys together, sitting uh, on the shed, sharing stories. Then the herd of elephant came. Then uh, my friends, that the seven boys that I, I was with them, they had two dogs. So the dog back to the elephant, and that herd of elephant, they have babies, that they have the calves. So uh, the mother, uh, I, I thought it was the matria, because I didn't know the, about the matria, but I learned now in school, the matria tried to protect the family. And then it, it ran after us and charged us. I ran long distance. The area was open, so no trees, and uh, it can, no, no place you can hide. And I was totally tired with a confused mind because he was trampling, making loud noise. The elephant came and stepped my leg. And uh, it broke my bones on, on both legs. Then I make a loud uh, shout. Then he noticed somebody is there. And then he collected me on the tusk. Then he threw me on the tree. And I fall down. He tried to find me. He dig a ground like a, a small dam, tried to bury me. And he, he missed and go to the national park. And I spent a couple years, uh, almost two years in hospital, try to fix my bone. They put the metals on it. And I used the uh, wheelchair for six months. When I was in pain, I was blaming an elephant. And I was th saying that uh, when I get up, I'm going to kill an elephant. But uh, after I recovered, and uh, 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 I got a friend of mine called Ian Douglas Hamilton, working with the elephant, that time in Amboseli. And uh, he actually teach me about the elephants and the uh, importance of the elephant. And then I come to be part of the elephant. I love the elephant and I don't blame anymore. And <laughs> Porini, porini, porini. Porini, mobile one. Mkujo mpungwe ni maji, undofu wa mejao kwa ilange. Maja, tunakuja kukurumisha generator. Selenke Conservancy, we have uh, three boreholes. We have one near uh, the Porini Amboseli camp. Uh, we have one in a place called Yotango Rimoro. And we have one in a place called uh, Ndonyondari area. The waterholes are frequented by the elephants throughout the day. After all, elephants drink an average of 160 liters of water daily. And in the night, it is bottoms up again. The elephants used to go up there in the dry, in the wet season, sorry, in the wet season. But, and then they'd always have to come back in the dry season because there wasn't any water up there available to them. But now there is because of the conservancy and they can stay up there year round. So that takes a lot of pressure off, off the park. And uh, the elephants that have been up there have done very well. They're, they've done well and well, all the elephants have, but the Selenge elephants are doing particularly well because there's a lot of food up there. They love all that bush and the key things that makes Selenke Conservancy and uh, the Purini Conservancy is unique is that it's very much about habitat in partnership with communities. And uh, something that's very important to us and that Jake realized, you know, 30 plus years ago, is that really the key to securing our wildlife for the long term is a matter of habitat. You know, for a long time, people are talking about poaching and other things in terms of uh, degrading or redu reducing numbers of wildlife. But the key thing is habitat. And I think now more than ever, especially with COVID and the issues that we've seen, is that it's extremely important to protect our biodiversity and to protect habitat. 
some years back, there used to be this no elephant in Porini Cup in Selenge. But elephants are very smart. When they see there is a place which they can go and stay and have good life and they get enough vegetation, which one, what they want, they know their route. And they have an elephant, they have their own path. Uh, this is a direct benefit because uh, the conservancy is our ranch and it's, it's a community land we set aside for our life, for the income. Like now, people are employed, people are earning salaries through the conservancy. Uh, uh, before this corona, it was wonderful. It was the only project we are depending on in a selling group ranch. Yeah, so our Purini and Game Watchers partnership with the community is very much about finding a, a win-win relationship that is good for uh, the community that's also good for Purini as a business and in the same time is directly uh, protecting habitat and improving biodiversity. And uh, so we're very proud that uh, what, uh, over the last 25 years, uh, we can definitely see there's been significant uh, improvement to communities. Some of the areas that we believe are important, one is employment. Uh, we believe employment is one of the best ways to uh, improve livelihoods and uplift livelihoods. So uh, Purini and our conservancy concept is very much about habitat. Every tent that we set up has to, sec has to protect directly 700 acres of habitat. So for example, this Purini Amboseli camp that we're sitting at today, it's 10 rooms, and it's directly paying the monthly contribution to protect 7,000 acres of habitat. However, it was not anticipated that the water holes could host over 300 elephants and other species of wildlife. It is now becoming a rather tight squeeze for the elephants, especially when it comes to drinking water. However, the COVID pandemic, um, as we know, not just in Kenya, but globally, has really shut down global tourism. We've seen uh, in, in, uh, flights being canceled. We've seen international airlines collapsing. We've seen countries close their airspace for months on end. And this has had a massive negative impact because it's basically brought our revenue to zero, whereas the costs of running the conservancy are still there. You know, rangers need to be in the field. They still need to uh, protect the habitat. You need to keep the wildlife water holes running. In this area of Selenke, which is a dry habitat, if we don't have water, the wildlife will actually leave. Also, the carrying capacity and being able to sustain, especially the large number of elephants that we have, would not be possible. So it's extremely important there are costs involved. And then the other side is uh, community livelihoods. We know that it's important to ensure that community livelihoods <clears throat> are uh, sustained, because if not, uh, many times they have no option but to look to other alternate uh, uses of making an income to keep their families going. And many of these are environmentally uh, are bad for the environment or might even include bushmeat uh, poaching, which we've seen a big increase in many parts of Kenya and outside the conservancy here. Back in the field, two bull elephants, oblivious of these challenges, are busy interacting with one another using their trunks. something learned in their younger years. Trunk Communication 101 Follow the direction of the tail with your trunk to learn how to control it. Hmm, I'd rather just leave it in my mouth. Talk about having a mouthful of trunk.
Lesson 2 Using your trunk for non-verbal communication. Enough for the day. But they are not the only ones going out to school here. For now, we have uh, education for conservation programs roll out in schools near uh, Selling Cake Conservancy. And one of the uh, things that we're trying to do is we're trying to educate the young uh, generation, students in school, to become good ambassadors of wildlife. And through this, we are able to um, uh, educate them um, to also understand the benefits of wildlife. You have seen a giraffe, yeah, uh, zebra, even elephant. Where did you see the elephant? Where? The forest. Is we are trying to achieve to have more uh, young, uh, young generations, young students who are actually becoming good, um, you know, good ambassadors outside there and who will be um, teaching uh, other, other young children uh, about wildlife and how to live with this wildlife. When, a, when an elephant breaks a big tree, then an animal like a gazelle, you know the gazelle? Yes. It's be able to eat, isn't it? Yes. So it's actually healthy more. The elephant is helping small animals. Well, first of all, I want to, to congratulate uh, Jack Reef Cook for a wonderful program and, and, and commissioning of community benefiting from conservation. 25 years ago, we never thought about it. Now we've seen the difference, not only the difference of benefit for communities, but also the difference of improved biodiversity in these areas. Selenke is one of the classic examples, one of the oldest uh, conservancies uh, that have been developed. Why not? And it has been modeled. We have now over 170 conservancies in the country. Selenke Conservancy now hosts a wide variety of bull elephants, all with their unique characters. Equinox from the E family has a rich heritage. The first ever documented twin elephant in the Amboseli ecosystem. Born in 1969 with a twin sister, Eclipse, who passed on in 2017. Another family that went up fairly early was the U, UA family, we call them. And they, um, they, I think they, they form something like a bond group with the VAs. They're fairly close to the VAs. So they're uh, not as big, if they're a smallish family, not, but they have beautiful, beautiful uh, big females. The, their matriarch was named Ursula, and she was a gorgeous female. And then uh, she had a, a, a female named um, Ulrika. And um, she's still with us. She's an old girl, though. She's, she's quite old. And uh, they have a tendency to have males. Some, some families have a tendency to have lots of females. Some have males. Um, but the UAs have had uh, quite a few gorgeous males who grew up to be big, big, beautiful males. And one of them is... You see a lot up in in Selenge named Umoja, 
and um, he's he looks actually looks like a UA to me. And they have also each family has a look, you know, mostly. And um, so the males have stayed. The UA males have stayed up there as well. Umoja often enjoys his dust baths among his peers. As the layers of dust settle in the wrinkles of his thick skin. The fisher's starlings hover around him impatiently. Once done and dusted, he heads out for his next activity of the day, with the fisher's starlings hot on his heels. They are out to get the seeds and insects dropping off from the wave lines of the soles of his feet. Easy pickings for the day. Age, you know, the tusks grow throughout their lifetime. So the older an animal is, the bigger its tusks. And with with males, they've discovered that the male's tusks grow faster as they get older. <laughs> so it's really very important for fighting and but also, also there's a genetic component. Uh, some families have bigger tusks. I mean, the famous elephant Tim from the TD family, all those males have beautiful tusks, you know, beautiful big tusks. And that's, that's a, uh, a factor, the genetic factor. Nothing beats a good mud bath at the waterhole. This is the life. The best way to cool off in the blazing African sun. And in fact, the, the largest tusks ever recorded that are in the British Museum were found or were, were, from a, were taken from an elephant that was shot on the lower slopes of northern, northern lower slopes of Kilimanjaro. And they were 224 pounds and 226 pounds each. And um, they're Amboseli elephants. If they, were, if they were on the lower slopes of Kilimanjaro, northern lower slopes, then they were, they were Amboseli elephants. So they've got that, that genetic uh, you know, tendency to have big, big tusks. After a good afternoon's activity, a drink of water to quench your thirst. kwanza tupate kitu inaitwa corridors. Kwa sababu ukiangalia mambo ya conservation, conservation na yesu kuwa conservation kama kuna wanyama na wanyama hawezi kuingia kama kuna manjia ya kutoka amboseli ya kutoka huko labda tu tukubaliane tutengeneze kama corridor kama tatu. Elephant corridors kuna ile ya kutoka Marete inapita mahali inaitwa Old Danger inaingia kwa Selling Conservation Area. Alafu kuna hii nyingine inaitwa Osawan. Inapita eh, eh, karibu na Tolakaria. Inapita juu kidogo ya Oloturo. Inakuja inaingilia mahali inaitwa Naonkula Clan. Alafu kuna nyingine ina, inatoka kuanzia inatoka kuanzia eh, Conservation Area inaenda ikielekea upande ya Shulu. Hiyo inapita hapo Eh, karibu na Amerikani hii milima inaitwa Olemipoti. Najua dawa ya ku, ya, ku, ya, ku, ya, ku, ya kupata ndofu na kupata wanyama ni kukodesha hiyo kwa sababu hakuna mtu atakataa kukodesha. 
wakodeshe hiyo corridors iwe ondovu wanapata nafasi ya lakini hasa sasa kama unaambiwa ndofu itembee kwako lakini wewe hauna faida obviously utakatakata hiyo shamba yako labda labda hata utauza ama labda hata utaweka biashara ya nyanya ama labda utaweka nini kitu kama hiyo so but we are trying to talk with the community at least to keep a aside where the corridors for elephant fall also for their safety and also for the elephants because the elephant the corridor they used to to pass an elephant they never forget they know where they 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 pass and they know where they can still pass and go through so that's why we're trying to put the community aside you know, to build houses where the corridors for the elephants are 10 years ago there was a study on uh, corridors and migratory routes Uh, we need to revise it now it's important for us to revise it at the same time to appreciate that we don't block the migratory routes uh, routes and this is the th- biggest threat we have now because the minute we compete between agriculture and population uh, uh, settlements then we will block and we in the government are very clear that migratory routes is the survival particularly for elephants in this country Well, I'm actually quite concerned about the future right now because um Ambaselli was successful because the area around the national park was held by the Maasai people who are tolerant of wildlife. But they have now decided to um uh, subdivide their what's called a group ranch and sell and um divide the plots into 21 acres. I mean to divide the land into 21 acre plots. And um I'm very worried about that because there's the plots are being sold to people from outside to non-Maasai. And I worry about fencing and farming and all the things that are uh not good for elephants and other wildlife and pastoralism and the Maasai themselves. I mean where are they going to herd their cows? So um the future is actually very up in the air right now where where I think uh we're at a crisis point for for Ambaselli. This is nature and if you play with it you will never find it. So as now we are going under demarcation of this land and people are getting their own parcels. People should be very careful not to disturb the wildlife because the moment they disturb the wildlife uh is uh, they they lose and uh, they will lose many things you know even uh wildlife are godly things you know because uh, you see now god has given wildlife land which they, they were chased out of it so people come with the idea of conservancy well as a government policy first we discourage fencing uh, particularly in areas where the uh, wildlife is is existing in a bigger way because there are some areas which are community land there are areas where where definitely uh, there is wildlife we want to balance between livelihoods of communities and do business or or economic development but also we can guide them uh, and this is where the conflict is coming in but i think we have a clear policy uh, that policy also is uh, is 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 uh, is is ac- ac- accepted by communities but again uh, sometimes is greed of people who want to focus only on economic development but we have we as conservationists need to understand there must be a balance because if the community do not benefit from conservation then they will not support conservation uh, we found this an average of about 65% uh, of wildlife is found outside protected areas and that number is growing because of the climate change uh, phenomenon that is happening across the globe Uh, so we find ourselves wildlife moving more and more outside protected areas as the droughts increase uh, less rainfall and invasive species uh, you know uh, take over big part chunks of protected areas they lazily go about their everyday activity enjoying every day as it unfolds have a bum rub Or how about cleaning one's trunk? What do I do with this fallen branch?
perhaps a pedicure. Works well as a toothpick. Ouch! That hurt. Or maybe just use it to relieve myself from that irritating itch. As we've seen, incomes, participation and relationship between communities and wildlife, we've seen increased protection. Uh, so the idea of dispersal areas that wildlife can now interact and offer opportunities for communities and landowners is so, so important for sustainability of wildlife as Africa modernizes and develops. It's a big part of, of our vision uh, for, for Africa. So it's critical to create protected areas like conservancies, uh, national parks and reserves, and also vital now with the growing population and land use change that corridors are created to actually connect to these habitats. If they're not connected, unfortunately, we're going to lose a lot of the megafauna like elephants who need very large areas to uh, roam on, to live on, and also many of our key migrations. Elephants overall have played a bigger role in uh, tourism, but also in awareness. In all aspects of work, you need champions. And for tourism or conservation, elephants are our champions for either how we talk about conservation, how we talk about the role uh, of wildlife in our, in our experiences as human species on, on the continent, but as we raise awareness of the heritage, Africa's heritage, especially to the young Africans who are now 70% of our population on the continent. We are, we are now facing ma major threats. Climate change is the biggest threat. Human wildlife conflict is another threat. Invasive species in protected areas is another threat, as well as competition between agriculture and settlements is another threat. So we have five major threats that we must have the courage to address them. The elephants of Selenke are back. Back in bigger numbers as many more families are coming back to their ancestral land. The custodians of this paradise are championing conservation and bravely guarding a heritage that was once considered lost. Through the efforts of Jake, the LSNK community and game watchers, a habitat has been restored. So long as there are open spaces, elephants will roam the wilderness freely. It is up to us to preserve these open spaces for them and let the big tusker gene prevail. As an age-old African proverb states, return to old watering holes for more than water. Friends and dreams are there to meet you. <laughs> 